In 1879, Thomas Edison experimented with using carbon fiber as a filament in light bulbs. It didn't succeed. However, since its invention in 1860, carbon fibers have found usage in the aerospace industry, where their high strength to weight ratio is widely desired. When Rolls-Royce entered the US market, carbon fiber was employed for the fan blades in the jet engines. Since then, it has been utilized by the military and in racing vehicles. Products for everyday use now contain it. Carbon fiber is used in both the priciest and lightest fly fishing rods and racing bicycles. Since carbon fiber has such a high-tech appeal, it is now exploited for its aesthetic qualities rather than its engineering ones, as in the case of aftermarket auto parts. A choice of carbon fiber for an engineer would be expected to be based solely on its engineering properties. However, the late Stockton Rush, the founder and CEO of OceanGate, was not your typical engineer. He and four other passengers in the Titan submarine died on the disastrous dive to visit the Titanic on June 18, 2023. A graduate of Berkeley's Haas School of Business with an MBA and a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering from Princeton, he decided on carbon fiber as the material for his next generation of deep-sea submersibles that would transport Titaniacs, as he termed Titanic aficionados, all the way down to 4,000 meters below the surface to see their beloved shipwreck and make a lot of money doing it. One Titaniac from a prior successful dive saved for 30 years to come up with the $250,000 OceanGate demanded. The hull of a deep-sea submersible designed by OceanGate was the first to employ carbon fiber. In an interview with the Wall Street Journal on June 23, after everyone had given up hope of finding survivors, James Cameron, the director of the Titanic and a well-known undersea explorer, taking his one-person submersible, the Deep Sea Challenge, to the Challenger Deep, guided by McCallum, where the pressure is over a thousand atmospheres, said he knew what happened. The sub has imploded, he says with certainty. Cameron says, I always thought it was a terrible idea. I never thought the technology of wrapped carbon fiber filament on the cylindrical hull would work. Cameron regrets not speaking up when he first learned about this application for carbon fiber, however he thought someone was smarter than me, as he puts it. That unnamed someone is probably Stockton Rush, as Cameron is a co-owner of Triton Submarines, which manufactures and sells submersibles, as reported in the Wall Street Journal. It is logical to ask why carbon fiber components may function flawlessly above the surface yet catastrophically thousands of meters below. In order to construct stiff, sturdy, and lightweight fuselages, wet winding carbon fiber around a round core is a best practice approach in the aircraft industry. As seen in the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, Rush claimed to have a collaboration with Boeing, which Boeing refuted following the crash. According to Oni Wiseman, travel editor of the Travel Weekly, who recalled speaking with Rush for the Washington Post, the relationship may have been as simple as buying carbon fiber from the aircraft manufacturer at a big discount because it was past its shelf life for use in airplanes. The main structural difference between a pressure vessel, such as an aircraft fuselage, and a submersible is external versus internal pressure. Internal pressure makes its gas container want to expand. Think of a balloon. The tightly wound carbon fibers around a fuselage are great at resisting expansion. The tensile strength of carbon fiber as much as 7.06 GPA is four times better than steel wire, 1.77 GPA. Carbon fiber intention also offers satisfying simplicity. Like a string being pulled, it keeps its shape in tension. Put carbon fiber in compression, however, and all bets are off. Pressure vessels also make use of carbon fiber, a design that places carbon fibers in tension and with internal pressure on the order of one atmosphere, as occurs with the Dreamliner, is very different from putting carbon fibers in compression with external pressures two orders of magnitude higher, as occur at titanic depth. It also has a marine application, including scuba tanks, which are valued for their lightness. The compression of the carbon fibers woven into the hull of the submersible was caused by external pressure. The epoxy matrix that covers each carbon fiber is responsible for expecting the fibers to stay round rather than crumpling. However, the strength of carbon fiber in compression can be as low as 30% and can reach a maximum of 60%. However, 
the pressure exerted against the spherical domes results in a significant axial force that is also applied to the Titan's cylindrical segment of the hull. At a depth of 4,000 meters, the resulting force is a massive 20 million pounds, squeezing the cylinder along its axis. Could it be handled by the carbon fiber hull? According to a 2017 article in Composite Weekly, the Cyclops II, later renamed the Titan, was built out of carbon fiber by alternating placement of pre-preg carbon fiber, epoxy unidirectional fabrics in the axial direction with wet winding of carbon fiber, epoxy in the hoop direction for a total of 480 plies. The wound carbon fiber, which is located on the other side of the axis, does not assist the hull in the axial direction. As a result, the only materials that can resist the axial force are sheets of CFRP that are manually laid and the epoxy matrix's compressive strength. The carbon fibers in the sheets run along the axial direction. The carbon fiber filament is wrapped around the metal tube in Ocean Gate. However, this could be a mandrel that was removed after the composite hardened. We cannot infer that it provides assistance because there is no proof that it remains inside the hull. Carbon fiber might be kept aligned with the axis by being wound with filament around pre-preg sheets. In contrast to homogeneous, isotropic materials, like the titanium used in the end caps, which spring back into shape as good as new, the carbon fiber hull suffers with each dive. The possibility that the filament ribbon would be cut, compromising some strength, has, however, raised at least one eyebrow among the engineers at end tips. In addition to other issues that are specific to composites, the fibers may break, bend, or lose adherence to the epoxy matrix. The Titan made numerous dives deeper than 3,000 meters, which may have led to the development of flaws. The Titan was taken to a depth of 12,000 feet off the coast of the Bahamas in April 2019 by submersible expert Cole Stanley. OceanGate planned to keep an eye on its hull and built its own real-time hull monitoring system to listen for creaks and pops with 20 acoustic detectors and 30 strain detectors, most of them on the carbon fiber cylinder. No hull monitoring system was required during that dive. The New York Times stated that Stanley, after hearing a cracking sound, pushed Rush to postpone the dives to view the Titanic that summer. Does this imply that the Titan's hull should not have been wrapped in carbon fiber composites? Certainly it does not. The right mix of materials, design engineering, tooling, and fabrication, according to experts, might result in a carbon fiber composite submersible hull that can perform all the tasks Stockton Rush intended for Titan to carry out, including recurrent and secure deployment in deep sea research. Rush would have needed to acknowledge the enormous risk that his ignorance posed and submit to the experience and wisdom that this profession has to offer in order to accomplish this. Apparently, Rush didn't operate in this way. Without a doubt, we are drawn to innovators and risk-takers like Rush, who push the envelope and aren't afraid to break the law in an effort to improve human performance. The development of the internet, early space exploration, and the invention of the airplane, among other human endeavors, were all motivated by this attitude. However, risk-taking is entirely based on the type of risk involved. At the time of its implosion, Titan was 3,500 meters below the surface and under 4,993 psi of pressure. Such a setting lacks any room for risk-induced error and is aggressive and unforgiving. Having said that, do you think with the correct design and proper engineering, a composite fiber hull is feasible? Share your thoughts in the comment box below. Please subscribe to Weather Collapse if you want to know more and be updated on the latest news about natural calamities or disasters happening all over the world, and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.